I'm not gonna glue my nuts to a sidewalk. This isn't secure! <laughs> if you're not... Making your device out of like recycled ball cheese or whatever it is. I'm gonna slowly turn into Louis Rossman at this rate. It, it's like tech is now made for the ultra rich. There's no tech made for the average consumer, the middle and lower class. There's no such thing anymore, dude. Walmart. And they got an HP pavilion. Welcome back, it's 2025, this is our first video of 2025, and it is off to a miserable start. <laughs> and why do I say that? Uh, it's not because I left my liver and my cuticles and my skin in Vegas. It's because what we saw at CES was very depressing. 2025 is, in my opinion, going to be like the year of e-waste. It's gonna be the year that we see more unrepairable things and things that aren't gonna last, less durable things, and just accepting it and understanding that there's nothing that we can do to stop this from happening and that we're, we're screwed. Now, it might be a terrible, terrible take. I might just be too negative. I think I'm being very realistic. It's pretty bad. It's bad. It's, it's really very bad. bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Every year, CES has like the cream of the crop, like the experimental top of the line tech that might not actually be ready for release to consumers and all that stuff, ready for mass production but you can kind of see a trend when you go there. And obviously this year's trend was AI, whatever. We already knew that. AI has been being shoved down our throats for probably two years now. But what concerned me the most was the design of a lot of these laptops and just devices in general, even like dishwashing machines and all this other stuff. It was so uh, just stupid in the sense that there was an LG dishwasher machine where the handle, it's a its a flat thing, and then the handle like slowly like pops out. They had another one, a light was under the fridge and there was a sensor and you you, you like wave your leg, you know, you do the pokey pokey. pokey, pokey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the fridge opens up and it was just like all these unnecessary things that you already know, these things are not reliable. They are not gonna last. So it's like every single year we see more fancy things and less durable things, less like focus on reliability and longevity and, and durability. And it f***ing sucks, man. It sucks. It, I, I wasn't expecting it. When I went to CES, I was expecting like, I was gonna see just like cool gadgets and all that stuff, which they were, they were cool gadgets. But I left depressed because I saw so many things that were just, why are we making this? Like this is gonna end up in a landfill. It's not gonna end up in a repair shop because they can't be repaired. Lenovo, speaking of Lenovo, I'm gonna be replacing the screen on this Lenovo ThinkPad P50 while I rant. So it, just bear with me during this ranting process. Lenovo has a new yoga that has a glass lid. I'm gonna say that again. The lid, the top of the laptop, is made of glass. That's gonna end well. Why? Why? The, the Lenovo Yoga is one of the most common repairs that we see in this in this shop. It's a broken screen or a broken hinge, but mostly it's a broken screen. And already from Lenovo Yogas that are like four years old, the cost of the screen or the cost of the display is like $200, man, $300. And for that price, you can just buy another used Lenovo Yoga or a brand new one that's gonna last just as long, if not shorter. And it's like, what, what are they? What are they thinking? I'm gonna try very hard not to swear in this video. What are they thinking? Like, yes, it looks nice, okay? But like, when did it become we're buying things to look at instead of buying things to use? And the people that are gonna buy this laptop, they're gonna buy them, I know as crazy as it sounds, but I'm telling you from experience, they're going to buy them for kids because it looks cool. And these kids are gonna shit all over this thing, man. Like, like literally and figuratively. They're going to take dumps on this laptop and then smash it with a hammer, then not wipe it off and bring it into Salem Texperts and then say, I need this repaired yesterday. And then when I quote them $600 for a screen and a back lid, they're gonna say, you're out of your mind. Why are you ripping me off? It's so aggravating to see this. Like on one aspect, I appreciate the engineering. I appreciate the design. I appreciate like going out of your way to do something cool and all that stuff. But at the same time, man, we are in such a dire situation when it comes to the environment. Right, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna protest and and block a street like stop oil. I'm not gonna glue my nuts to a fucking sidewalk for the environment, whatever. But uh, it's it's quite clear we've reached a point where we don't have infinite resources to keep making all these laptops and all these batteries and shit, and we're just spending them. I shouldn't even say we, companies, manufacturers are spending that time to just make shit look pretty and not to last and all that stuff. When in reality they should be doing the exact opposite. 
We should we should be bringing back the Toyota Corollas, right, of the early 90s, instead of just putting 16,000 batteries and turbos into a three-cylinder engine and, and increasing the efficiency. Yeah. It's it's you're creating more waste in the long run than you're preventing uh, by making your device out of like recycled ball cheese or whatever it is. It's it sucks, man. It's hard for me to word it. I'm not a word spurt. I'm a, I'm a fix spurt. Um, the greatest technician that's ever lived. But I'm speaking out of just frustration of 10 years of seeing this constant trend. And I've talked about it on this, this channel enough and you guys have seen it uh, many times and you're probably sick of hearing it too. But I, I just can't stress enough the reality of the situation. After I went to CES, the reality of how screwed we really are in terms of consumers and uh, the environment and e-waste. When you pair that with in October 2025, this year, Microsoft is not supporting Windows 10 anymore. That's it. That means a shit ton, a metric shit ton, probably shit tons, right? Metric shit tons. There's got to be a number out there of how many computers are going to be tossed aside because they can't run Windows 11. Now, of course, yes, those of us in the know can bypass Windows, the Windows requirements. We can bypass like the TPM and all this stuff using Rufus, thank thank baby Jesus for Rufus, but you think grandma is going to know how to bypass the Windows 11 requirements to install w Windows 11 on her 10 year old HP? No, because Microsoft is going to push that message to their computer just like they did with Windows 7, saying this computer is, this isn't, this isn't secure! <laughs> Your fucking dog's going to die if you don't update! They're going to see that and they're going to go out and they're going to buy a brand new computer. They're not going to buy a used computer, despite the many videos I've made about how you should buy a used computer, a used business class computer, like this Lenovo ThinkPad P50 that I'm fixing up. What's this thing? Escape. Well, I'm doing a terrible job at fixing this, huh? We had a customer the other day where their uncle or whatever was looking for a computer for their business. And they told their uncle, hey, get a used, used ThinkPad from these guys. And the uncle said, no, I don't want anything used. I want something new. So they went to fucking Best Buy Walmart. and they got an HP Pavilion. It's frustrating, man. It's not frustrating because you didn't give me money. Whatever. F*** that. I barely make money off this shop anyways. YouTube is what makes me money. The aggravating thing is that that motherfucker just burned $300 or $400. That, that device is going to end up in a landfill. The hinges are going to break. Something's going to break on that thing. Consumer laptop. It's aggravating, man. It's so aggravating. And it's depressing. It's like when you deal with this every single day and then you go to like the world's biggest electronics show and all you see is shit that's going to come into your repair shop and you're gonna have to tell the customer, I can't fix that. That's gonna cost too much to fix. I can't get the parts for that. That's not gonna last you two days. But it looks great. And yeah, it has the new Intel Core Ultra 5 HX HAI Pro Max. I'm gonna slowly turn into Lewis Rossman at this rate. <laughs> you know, I'm trying not to be Lewis. God bless him. I just talked to him last week. I'm trying not to become Lewis, but this is. This is getting out of control, man. And like, you only have a few manufacturers that are actually focusing on repairability. And by few, I mean one that I know of, Framework. They're the only ones that I know that are actually focusing on repairability. And I did see one company at CES, which I am gonna make a whole dedicated video on, that are doing God's work by preventing laptops from getting water damaged in the first place. And verbatim, the CEO told me manufacturers don't want to implement the product because 20% of new device purchases are from things that can't be repaired. So they have like a coating that they coat motherboards with. It only costs a dollar for the manufacturer to do this, by the way, a dollar. That was the only interesting thing I saw at CES that like actually gave me hope instead of all these like, hey, look, my dishwasher can fuck me. So that was nice to see. But it wasn't nice to hear the struggle that this guy's having, the struggle that the company is having to get manufacturers to adopt this on a grand scale because that 20% profit loss from broken devices and people repeat business from people buying stuff. And that mentality, I am so sick of it. In 2025, I am afraid that mentality is just going it, to, it, it, nothing's going to happen to it. It's just going to get worse because from what we saw there, it, it's nothing is going to be repairable. It's going to be too expensive to repair. So what I want to do in 2025 going forward is I'm going to be focusing on selling computers that are going to last because it is quite clear that repairing is not, not going to be a thing anymore. And my profit margins on repair are just impossible to reach now to keep the shop running. But what I can still do is sell used laptops that I think are going to last you. Unfortunately, I only can sell laptops that are eighth gen Intel or newer because that's what's going to officially support 
Windows 11. I would love to give you a bypass to machine, and I probably still will offer that, but there's no warranty on that. I don't know if Microsoft's gonna release an update in two months that, you know, deads the, the bypass that we do with Rufus and stuff. And I don't wanna sell something that uh, consumers not gonna be able to use for years. That, that's, that's what I want to do. I don't, I don't wanna use my YouTube voice, my big swinging YouTube dick, to just keep selling you brand new things. You like that? I wanna actually sell you things that are going to last you, man. Uh, and that's what my goal is in 2025. Because I see this just giant e-waste event coming up. And I'm sure many of you do too. I'm sure someone else has made a video about this. And that all starts with repairing stuff that's broken. So this ThinkPad uh, P50 has a screen, there's a line on the bottom of the screen. The LCD needs to be replaced, which we have here. Uh, I'm making $20 off this laptop. <laughs> $20 of this laptop. So if anything happens to this laptop, I'm screwed. If, if I have to warranty anything on this, I'm, I'm pretty screwed. Uh, but you know what? I don't care because I'm making more money on this video, It probably in the revenue, than this is gonna cost me. But I can get this in somebody's hands that they're going to use it for years to come. And it's gonna save this, this thing from the landfill. And I don't mind upgrading. I upgrade stuff all the time. Maybe not all the time. Maybe like every two or three years I upgrade stuff. Like this year, I upgraded my Asus ROG Phone 3. Now, since we're on the subject of upgrading, I want to show you my latest upgrade courtesy of Red Magic, which is the Red Magic 10 Pro, or as I like to call it, the greatest gaming phone that's ever lived. Because the specs on this pocket rocket are better than most laptops that come into my shop. For the processor, we have the Snapdragon 8 Elite paired with up to 24 gigabytes of LPDDR5X Ultra RAM and one terabyte of UFS 4.1 Pro storage. All kept chilly with a new cooling system that features liquid metal tech and a built-in fan to make sure you can reach max performance without reaching max temperatures. Along with being powered by an industry first 7050 milliamp silicone anode battery and the first 1.5k full gaming AMOLED display with a 144Hz refresh rate. When you put these specs together, what you get is not only the best gaming phone on the market, but an absolute beast when it comes to productivity. And this baby has both a headphone jack and an IR sensor. Look what I can do. I'll never have to search for a remote again. I'm in love. And if you're in love with mobile gaming, you just met your new partner. Because the 10 Pro eats up Genshin Impact on max settings just like a toddler eats up baby food. But my go-to is Call of Duty, where the 520Hz shoulder triggers really come in handy. It's basically a whole gaming PC but in your pocket. Even more so when you hook up a keyboard and mouse to it like I did here. So if you're looking to upgrade like I did, and you want the most powerful device for productivity and gaming, check out the Red Magic 10 Pro by clicking the link in the description and the pinned comment. I love new tech, man. I'm passionate about new tech. But when that tech comes at a cost that I know is not affordable, and not even talking about money, but talking about the environment, that's where I get beef, and that's why I have beef with CES this year. I'll be making a dedicated CES video coming soon. I don't know if it's going to be whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to give a date because God knows. My CES video isn't going to be about tech. It's going to be about me and Lupe making fun of everything. It's going to be at roasting everything because <laughs> what else was there? There was like nothing impressive. You'll, you'll see all the videos at CES like, oh, a see-through TV, cool. Probably cost fucking $8,000. Mm -hmm. If that screen breaks, you're, you're screwed. It's like tech is now made for the ultra rich. There's no tech made for the average consumer, the middle and lower class. There's no such thing anymore, dude. We get the, the hand-me-downs, the crumbs. And I say we because I was born into shit, man. Like we didn't have, we had garbage growing up. And my dad didn't know any better and he bought HPs. <laughs> my first laptop. The reason I'm in this business is because I had an HP that had a bad GPU. Shout out to the DV9000 series. You guys, you guys already know. Tech is becoming an ultra expensive luxury for the ultra rich. And that's what CES is about, and I understand that. It's been like that for 10 years, but that's not cool, man. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start financing all these laptops. You already are. Gaming. Yeah. You see. already are, because consumers think they can afford this stuff. Huh. And they put it on a credit card. Mm -hmm. And that's why credit card defaults are at an all-time fucking high. Yeah. Because just like car payments and shit, we think we can afford this shit, and then we can't. What's $400? Wait till the $400 is due. <laughs> yep. And then when I hit you with a $200 repair, I'm the bad guy. Yeah. Because your 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 computer is, is unrepairable. I will say this. Shout out to Dell. They have a horrible naming scheme. The Pro and Pro Max. Like, come on, man. Where's the originality? Not even going to get... That's a whole other video. But shout out to Dell. They have a laptop that has modular 
USB-C. I'm so thankful for that. That's the shit that I want to see at CES when I go there. I want to see stuff like, I want to see it cool as fuck and easy to repair and easy to upgrade and like consumer friendly. I don't want to see a fucking glass sandwich that is going to come into my shop in, in two years and cost a grand to repair and just tell the person, then they'll have me recycle this thing and fucking throw it in the landfill or whatever. I'm curious what you guys think. I'm gonna replace this screen now. Look at that, a removable battery. Can you believe it? I didn't see a single removable battery at uh, CES. I'm still going. A lot of these companies too will, will say that their stuff is repairable or whatever, but then they'll sell you the parts and the parts will cost like $8,000. So what, does it even matter that it's repairable? Because it's not gonna, it's it's gonna cost too much to repair. It's not gonna be worth repairing. Because right to repair laws just say the price has to be reasonable. Who defines reasonable? Because it's certainly not the consumer that defines reasonable. That's never gonna change. It's never gonna be regulated. Unless you actually start regulating how much profit a company can make off of a replacement part. There is no way that's ever happening in America, dude. Especially with your boy deregulating everything, cutting regulations everywhere. Like, it's not gonna happen. So, keep buying used things like this Lenovo ThinkPad P50 that will be on sale. Uh, SalemTechSperts.com eventually. I don't know when I'm gonna put it on sale, but like, I just replaced this screen and two minutes. That's all we can do is just keep supporting the companies that are actually making things repairable and not putting money into their pockets for things that are unrepairable. Because 2025 will be one of the biggest e-waste events in all of humanity. And I say that not sarcastically. I genuinely believe that 2025 and 2026, as all these computers get tossed into the ditch because of Microsoft's requirements and just how things are being built, it's not gonna be good, man. It's not gonna look good. And that's it, I appreciate you sticking with me throughout this whole video, if you have. If you haven't, then uh, I'm sure you'll just go on TikTok afterwards. Oh, wait. <laughs> Guess you can't now. <laughs> Hopefully you'll just watch my YouTube shorts. That's what you'll do. At least if you're gonna brain rot, educate yourself while you're brain rotting. That's what I, that's what I like my shorts to do. Uh, but I, this is a serious subject. I just I wanted to make a dedicated video on it, even if it's not going to do well. I wanted to to get get the get the word out. I don't see many creators talking about it. I see every creator talking about, oh, this is my favorite tech at CES. This is what I loved at CES. But it's not like, wow, we're fucked. You guys are living in squalor. Poor thing. I'm sorry. I'm just helping you guys clean up the house. You guys are living in. Filth. Disgusting. Chinese food. I mean, there's no excuse for this stuff, though, you know what I mean? Like, why do you have paint cans just in your fucking kitchen? You guys are disgusting. Tea kettle can, can say, where's the tea kettle belongs here? You should not be cooking. What the f- How many diseases did they catch on, on eating from that frying pan?